Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and in this video let's check out some awesome devlogs right here on YouTube. I spend a lot of time just watching game dev related videos, so I figured I'd group a bunch of them in a nice video since I assume a lot of you have the same interests as me and you might not be aware of some of these channels. Devlogs are always great, both for inspiration as well as for seeing how other people make their games and solve all of the usual game design questions that each game brings up. There's always a lot to learn by watching someone else build a different game. And by the way, I'm not going to mention Danny since I'm guessing all of you already know the channel. He's working on Carlson, which looks awesome and the devlogs are always extremely entertaining. Also, these are in no particular order. All of them are very interesting and unique and in various stages of development. So let's begin with the channel DevDuck, working on a marine biologist RPG named Dauphin. You play as a marine biologist and your goal is to save the ocean. You go through various islands and caves looking for interesting marine animals to rescue. One unique thing is how the game does feature combat, however, you don't actually kill any creatures. The whole idea is to save them, so as you attack the animals, you're not really damaging them, but instead you're just clearing their corruption so they get back to being normal. Personally, I always find cleaning things very compelling, starting with something messy and ending with it pristine, so I really like the idea of starting with a completely corrupted world and clearing it bit by bit. You have various tools at your disposal, there's a bunch of NPCs you can talk to, and you also have a ship which allows you to travel between islands. I imagine the final game will also have some sort of Pokemon-like element as you discover and catalog all of the creatures that you come across. The devlogs have a really nice chill feeling, very relaxing. They are nicely filmed and edited with some calm music and there's about two per month. The game is being developed in Godot, although it did start life as a Unity game. It has been in development for one year now and progress has been solid. He also made a very interesting video on the results of his very first indie mobile game. It's full of very valuable lessons learned as well as some financial results. Do remember that the definition for success is different for each person depending on what you value. Knowledge and experience can certainly be a lot more valuable than just dollars. And he also made another very interesting video on how to become a morning person. He mentions the benefits of having those hours of clear focused work or leisure time, as well as three very useful tips that will definitely help you if you want to give it a try. For me, having a morning routine is absolutely essential to be able to make my games in these videos. I actually made a video about a year ago on my 8 tips from working from home and having a clear routine and waking up was definitely one of them. For me, if I don't take advantage of those hours early in the morning, then my productivity really just drops like a brick. It's not for someone, some people definitely do work much better at night, but I would encourage you to at least experiment and see if it works for you. It seems to help him a lot in managing working on the game while keeping a normal job. He also had a very unique supporter reward. You could support him and get a shrimp added to his tank named after you. Very creative and perfectly fits with the nature of the game. It's already at maximum capacity, but that was a really cool idea. Next up, Pontypants, working on a physics-based boxing game named Punch-a-Bunch. It's physically based with some pretty deep controls. Essentially, you move with the left stick and rotate your body with the right stick. And the way that you rotate your body is what defines what type of punch you throw. It's an interesting system that allows for some complex moves as opposed to just button mashing and learning combos. Visually, the game looks great. He worked as a VFX artist in the film industry and that definitely shows. Very good looking materials and post-processing effects. The actions also have quite a lot of weight behind them with a bunch of juicy effects. It definitely looks like it's very satisfying to play, which is very important for a fighting game where the total number of possible actions is quite limited. The videos are very well filmed and edited, nicely entertaining. The game is being developed using Unreal and has been in development for about 10 months. He actually quit his job to go full-time just recently. In that video, he mentions the dangers of being stuck in the comfort zone, which is definitely great advice for anything in life. I would definitely not encourage everyone to just quit their job and do game development full-time. This is after all a very tough industry, but I'm guessing he looked at his analytics and YouTube and estimated some sort of trajectory to profitability. With a decent YouTube channel and a low cost of living, you can definitely make it work. He also showcases a very important part of game development, which is getting other people to play the game as it's being developed. Feedback is crucial and having other people who have different interests and skill sets is absolutely necessary to make a game that appeals to more people and finds success. For example, he mentions how his girlfriend found a strategy of just spamming non-stop which was not the intended goal of his design. So always get your friends, family and really anyone willing to play your game, but at the same time do keep in mind the bias of the source of that feedback. 
Friends and family are likely too nice to give you some truly honest feedback, and they will probably be a lot more positive than they would be to a random game they just found on Steam. In the real world, real players are much more brutal and honest, so do keep that in mind whenever you listen to the thoughts of your friends and family. Getting good usable feedback is a huge topic on its own, but the best way is to just watch your friends play and don't say anything. Actions always speak louder than words. My only concern with this project is I think it might be a bit too niche. Fighting games is a very difficult genre to get into, both as a player and as a developer. The last indie fighting game that found success that I can remember was Dive Kick many years ago, which was sold based on its silly premise. And if it doesn't end up with online multiplayer or some sort of single player campaign, then that makes it even hard to sell. It doesn't look great though, very visually unique, so that will certainly help it stand out. But regardless of how successful the game is, the videos are extremely well produced and very entertaining, so I have no doubt that he will continue growing and find massive success on YouTube. Also, the Steam page just went live a few weeks ago, so check it out and give it a wishlist. Then over here we have BW Dev working on a management game named Limbermill. The game was inspired by two of my favorite games of all time, Roller Coast Tycoon and Factorio, so as soon as I saw it I was hooked. You start in a small forest, begin hiring some workers, placing some buildings and conveyor belts, start turning your wood into furniture and continue expanding your empire. Visually it's got a nice and clean pixel art style, the world is randomly generated and very well built, everything looks very natural. You have clumps of trees and rivers flowing through the world. It even has a power system with a second layer for managing all the power infrastructure with several power sources. All in all, I'm a big fan of design and all the systems and I really hope this one will do well. The devlogs are about every two weeks. It's being made in Unity and started development two years ago. He also made a very interesting video highlighting 12 years of game development, which also involved trying to turn this concept into a reality with several failed attempts. But as usual, every failed attempt is always a very valuable learning exercise, so those failed attempts weren't really failures at all. Every single one of those gave him the knowledge and experience, which makes the current iteration look great. So as you go about on your own personal game dev journey, keep in mind that failure is part of the process and everything is a learning opportunity. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button, it really helps out the channel. And as I've mentioned in several of my own videos, where I talk about how to find success with indie games, building a following is very important and the simplest way to do that is to have a public Steam page as soon as possible so that people can start wishlisting your game. This one already has a Steam page and currently has 1200 followers, so probably around 4 to 5000 wishlists, which is already very good. Based on the genre and the number of followers and wishlists, I would expect this game to be quite successful. As always, the definition of success depends heavily on a lot of factors, like for example the cost of living and how long it's been in development, but I do think this one will do very well. Either way, like I said, this is exactly my kind of game, so at least I'll be picking it up when it's out. The release date on the Steam page just says coming soon, but it's already quite far along and been in development for over two years, so I'm guessing it will be out sometime later this year. Then we have Flow Studio, currently working on an adventure exploration RPG named Lens Island. You control the titular character on this mysterious island with tons of areas to explore, build the home of your dreams, plant some crops and help out the villagers. Play around in the nice and happy island and then go down into the dark and gritty caves. Fight enemies and gather resources to further build your home and your equipment. So it's got elements of survival, crafting, exploration, farming, combat, building and so on. Tons of depth. Visually it looks excellent, this one has great use of lighting. The top island looks beautiful and very bright, while the caves look dark and gloomy. All of the UI also looks great, nice and clean icons, all of the windows are nicely organized with multiple tabs and scroll bars. It's got tons of customization, the building system looks very capable, you can place floors and then individual walls, it even supports multi-story buildings. Looking at this makes me want to experiment with creating a system like that, it allows you to create some very unique, very customizable buildings. The excellent use of lighting is definitely what makes this game really stand out, Every screenshot looks gorgeous, the day-night cycle is very important to the game, that's essentially how plants grow and time passes, so having some good looking sunrises and sunsets is definitely a huge plus. It is being made in Unity and has been in development for almost 3 years. And just like with so many devs, he mentions in the very first devlog that the goal was actually to make a game in 6 months to 1 year, so as you can see managing scope is always an issue for everyone. This one also has a Steam page and currently has 1200 followers, so I'm guessing around 4 to 5000 wishlists, which is very good. 
There was also a successful Kickstarter a while ago, and it managed to easily surpass the goal and get $45,000. The current release date is scheduled for July 21, so this one is definitely one to keep an eye on. And finally, we have Thin Matrix working on an unnamed city builder. Some of you are probably already aware of this channel. He's one of the OGs on YouTube and made the wildly successful Equilinox. That game also started as a devlog all the way back in 2015. It's got 2000 very positive reviews on Steam, so that one was definitely a massive success. Right now, he's working on this untitled city builder, something along the lines of SimCity or City Skylines. So you place down roads and buildings. There are people walking around all over as well as cars on the road. He hasn't yet mentioned much about the overall design, so I wonder how far he's going to push it or what unique spin the game will have. For me, his devlogs are extremely impressive because he manages to actually fit in quite a lot of code in the videos without making it boring. That's definitely a very impressive skill. For example, in one of the videos, he goes through all of the math for creating some road meshes, and in another one, he covers in detail how the pathfinding for the passengers and the car AI works. And despite all that complexity, the videos are very easy to watch. He uses a custom engine written in Java and using OpenGL. I believe he's building upon the very same engine that he used for Equilinox. Making your own engine, and especially using Java, would definitely not be my choice, but he's already shipped one successful title, so clearly he has the skills to pull it off. The benefit of making your own engine is that you can control absolutely everything and make the tools perfect for exactly your specific needs. However, the downside is that you have to literally build everything. So in one of the videos, he builds a GUI library from scratch, which means having to build things like a text box, which on an engine like Unity you get by default. It's been development for 15 months now and it's progressing nicely. The devlogs are all extremely chill and very well edited and showcase both game development but also a very healthy lifestyle. It's honestly impressive just how balanced his life is. That's definitely something that I personally have a lot of trouble with. City builders are always a popular genre, so that's a good start. His channel is also the biggest one of these in terms of views per video, so as soon as he puts it on Steam, I have no doubt he will gather tons of wishlists instantly. And I would also say that the audience for Equilinox will be interested in this game. Both of them have elements of management games. So that's one of the benefits of having a long career as an indie game developer. If you stick to the same or similar genre, you can keep growing an audience and get people interested from game to game. That's essentially how I managed to get 10,000 wishlists by the time that I launched my game, Battle Royale Tycoon. A lot of those came from people who played my previous games like Game Corp and Blueprint Tycoon. Alright, so there you have it. Those are 5 game dev channels doing interesting devlogs that you might not have known about. Go ahead, subscribe to their channels, follow their journey and let them know how you found them. There's links to all in the description. Do you have any others that you follow? If so, post them in the comments, I'm always interested in finding new ones. There's also a bunch of awesome channels doing game dev content other than straight devlogs, so I might cover some of those in another video. Alright, so this was an interesting video to make and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.